growing podcast up in the world right now, you know Say word. Only fans, real estate, talking in fashion, let them know what's happening Say word. On and off the court, in the field with the sports, let them know what's up Say word. The conversation is active, from movies to action, it's the main attraction Say word. Welcome to the world's fastest growing podcast, we back in Houston, Texas I got a very, very special, special, special episode today I'll talk about some money, generational wealth for the culture. We got the Moors in the building. Please introduce yourself. How you doing? My name's Kevin Moore. And I'm Brooklyn Moore with We Thrive Financial Services. Okay, let's, 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 let's talk about We Thrive first. Where did the name come from? Well, you know what? I'm not going to go there. Since, since we're here, we gonna, I want to see the connection. How did you guys beat? Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, because... How did you cause I want to hear Let me tell my side. Uh oh, uh oh. Uh oh. But long story short, my um I had a roommate in Oakland, okay. California, and she had a living boyfriend that we did not agree to. Shout out to Too Short. <laughs> yeah, I love Too Short. And then um she was just like, Well, let me bring in his friend so that then she thought all four of us was gonna be living together. I'm like, not happening. But they brought him along. Okay. And I ended up liking him a lot. Um, after everything was done, she's like, can he stay too? I'm like, nah, like your boyfriend still got to bounce because wow. he signed a lease between me and you, but, um, but I like this guy. So, and, and God bless me with Kevin. Kevin, it, did it go down like that, Kevin? Well, not exactly. Well, let us know what you happened. Know, look, you know, my, my boy called me over. He was like, you know, I got one for you. Ooh, <laughs> that sound, that, it do sound like, right, it usually right. go like that. It I'm do like, go like that. So I said, all right. He said, yeah, Stella need her groove back. So she, you know, she been away. So, you know, entertain her. I said, okay, I'm bringing over the drink. I said, all right. So I get there thinking, you know, one of them ones, it's just going to be a jump off and things like mm. that. And when I get there, you know, she actually had me waiting for like 45 minutes. I'm like, bro, You was waiting yo, for 45 minutes? Yo, yeah, I'm getting What up. you doing? I'm, I'm, I was I'm, doing I'm in my cup, you know, <laughs> drinking. And, um, you know, but when she came out, um, it was so far from the truth. You know, we actually had a conversation, and it was intellect. And I was okay. like, man, this girl ain't nothing like they explained to me. So I was like, so we, so the movie we watched was um, complicated. Okay. And we sat there, and we watched that movie, and we just talked all night about just about life. And I said, this one going to be the one. You, so you knew instantly? I knew instantly because little, little what well, she know now, but I actually had a dream of her, and I seen her in the dream. Say word. Word. Wow. And when I seen her, I knew this was the woman of my dreams. And then when I got to talk to her, I was like, oh, yeah, this the one. This Yo, the that's one. dope. Yeah. That's dope. I ain't going to front. I, I, I know he was the one, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You for real? I'm dead serious. Yeah, mm -hmm. no. Woman, y'all be like that, uh -uh. though. Y'all be talking all that mess. Oh, God, send me somebody <laughs> special. Then y'all got somebody there. I don't know if he's the one. Yeah, Look yeah. at you now. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know. So, you yeah, don't. Don't look at the package on the exterior. <laughs> the reason I love them though. The reason I wanted to go into that is because when you when you tell stories, people want to know where you guys come from, mm -hmm. and they see where you guys are at right now. So let's let's go into like how'd you guys come up with the name We Thrive? Okay, so I came up with the name, um, and that was just Holy Spirit inspired. Um, long story short, Kev was a plumber for ten years. Um, I was uh, in a detective in law enforcement in Oakland, California for 10 years. Like a real detective? Yeah, the like, popo. <laughs> like FBI or just state? No, a real detective in Oakland, California. Oh, damn. I hope I ain't got no warrant. <laughs> Lord. Man, uh, Kev. Like, <laughs> man. Uh, you still got a gun? Yeah, I still got a gun. <laughs> <laughs> I stay strapped. Carry on. But, um, so yeah, so around Christmas Eve, we ended up getting a phone call. Um, Kev, was, his job was like, hey, you need to come in for a little bit. He thought he was getting a promotion. Damn. But they were like, hey, you know, service has been really good with you. Unfortunately, the job is going to a new direction. He never told me, here we are, we got three kids, uh, all our homes and stuff. And then about three months later, I ended up getting dismissed from Oakland PD because I didn't want to take the vaccine. Ooh. And they mandated that. Ooh. So it was like, do I stand on my faith and my beliefs, or do I just go ahead and just do whatever, whatever masses say? <laughs> <laughs> wow. And um, I did. So I think one morning I woke up and I was like, Lord, like, we really ain't got no jobs. <laughs> and both of y'all was jobless at the same time? At the same time, right after each other. 
Damn. And I heard the Holy Spirit was just like, in this season, we thrive. And I'm like, okay, what does that mean? I started looking up thrive and stuff. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to be resilient. We're just going to keep going and God's going to do what he got to do. That, that's really what faith looks Amen. like, just trusting in him. <laughs> so that's what we've been doing and that's what we've, we've built. So, so Kev, let's, 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 let's go back to this time because I'm going to be real with you. One person losing a job is difficult. But both people losing a job around the same time, you being the man, you being the head of the house, like, like what, what, what advice would you give to another young man that's in, dealing with something like that or is going through something like that right now? <clears throat> what I would say is um, keep your head up. You always got to be learning, you know, exercising the mind because you never know. I was at a job for 10 years. I never thought that was going to happen to me. I thought I was going to retire as a plumber. But... I was always reading books. I was always going to conferences. I was getting around the right people. You know, I was even getting mentored on the side, and they was actually teaching me the game on finances and how to build wealth. And when that particular time came in, I had to jump out on faith and put those things into action, and that's exactly what I did. So any young man out there, it was your job. Just make sure you always keep your options open. Don't depend on no company to feed you because it's just business. When your time is up, it's up. So We Thrive, well, let the world know exactly what does We Thrive specialize in, in particular and specifically. Absolutely. So we help entrepreneurs save and grow money without wasting time and to fund they self through life insurance and credit. Okay. You got something to say, Brooklyn? Oh, well, you know, one thing, one of our visions is to just free 3,000 families from their nine to five. Um, we didn't realize we were being free, mm -hmm. but we were because in in actual aspect, when you work a job, and not saying you need to use the job to get where you need to get to, Absolutely. but when you work a job, literally you have no control over your time. And when they let you go, it's gone. So always be figuring out and developing yourself and figuring out like, okay, what has God called me to actually do in this life? Because yes, we all have our different identities. And a lot of times we lose that when we get into a job and we just get on autopilot. So what we do is we help people, even we're even if up and coming entrepreneurs and they're trying to get the funding. A lot of people, well, I ain't got the money for the business. Mm. Well, we gonna show you how to get to the money. <laughs> Fund yourself. But we're saying that when I, I got both of y'all here, and there's so many questions like they gonna be act, they have asked me about this episode. What, what like what advice would you give to someone if they're trying to get their company funded? Oh. Easy. Um, you got to start with building your personal credit the right way. See, most people think that because you got a 700, that means you can be obligated to get business funding. No, the underwriters are looking for certain metrics. So I'm going to give you the game. I'm going to give you the metrics you need to have. You need to have 10 plus positive accounts. That's primary accounts. You want to have no late payments. You got to pay your bills on time. Um, you want to have at least four to five years of credit history on your credit profile. You want to have, you only want to use zero to nine utilization. Don't be maxing out your credit cards, folks. Only have zero to nine. I know people teach you to have 30. Now, 30 is like the max. It ain't going to hurt you, but it ain't going to help you. Now we got to play with the credit algorithm. And then you want to have a mixed credit profile, not just credit cards, but you want to have installment loans, personal loans, maybe mortgages, things like that. And please don't be running your credit. You want to have at least two to three inquiries on your credit profile. Now, with that credit profile, you are bank eligible. You can go in there and literally rob the bank. Let me ask you this. So, this is a real question too. Yeah. <laughs> um, how come people think they can use their federal tax ID number to apply for credit? Have you have y'all seen that before? Because be, I, I say that because you just mentioned that you gotta use your personal credit. I never heard people say like I'm gonna try to use my like federal tax ID number or whatever. LLC number mm -hmm. to try to apply for credit instead of using them because people be thinking they don't have to use their personal credit to apply for business credit. Absolutely. So here, here's the thing. You actually go use both. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want to expedite the process, because all the companies is looking at the people that own the business. So they're looking at your uh, personal credit. But they tie it to your EIN number. Now, when it comes to... Okay, yeah, yeah, that's what I meant to say. EIN, EIN number. Yeah. yeah. So when it falls back on the EIN... Only way it falls back on your personal credit is you default on a loan. Okay. Now, the reason why you want to vouch for the business is because you're in a hurry like me. I don't have time to be waiting. Now need months. that money. When, when things finna go on sale and, and yeah. real estate deals is happening, I need to have access to money. Most people want to find funding when they need it. The best time they have it is when you don't need it. Okay. Credit insurance. 
Um, we was talking off air, and you was talking about how both of them kind of like coexist each other. Can you explain that again? Oh, oh yeah. I, I kind of talk. I'll talk a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so how we were able to build like our dynasty and enterprise within a company um, when everything fell apart was through leveraging credit. So what that looks like is, like you said, making sure that your personal credit is, in, is intact and then going to the bank, getting what, getting the money that you need to get, mm -hmm. then coming back, wiping, doing what you need to do, and then going and getting that money as well on any businesses. So the more businesses you have, the more money you have access to. And that's just that. You can get up to 50, 100K or whatever on each I need category. it. I need it. So there's money that people is like, it's literally sitting on the table that you can have access to. You just don't have the knowledge and how to apply it and do it. So that's what we we help people in. He, he does that in. Um, yeah, so another thing too, just with life insurance in general, as being a business owner, nobody worries about what happens to the business if, if something happens to you. Oh, yeah. I, yo, you know what's crazy? That's true, because... I, it, it, it just, you just even saying that um, a friend of mine, his father just passed away mm -hmm. and they have a business and he recently just said, he was like, yo, we never even thought about the business. Mm. Like, cause that's true. People don't be like, yeah. cause it's it, like when you're going through it, you're grieving. Yeah. You're like, we got to take care of this for the personal stuff. But it's like, damn, we, we forgot. He got like the shop. We got to figure that out too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's What's true. The e. T., e. T., his business partners, they all have key man policies on him which is insurance that if anything happens to him, then the company, they're going to be good. So everybody has a policy on each other. So if anything who, happens... And, and excuse me, who, who said this again? I think it's E.T., Eric Thomas, right? Yeah, oh, for real? Okay. Yeah, he was talking about that, yeah. Wow, shout out yeah. to That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you don't know what you don't know. Even all these, um, the record labels, they have insurance called Key Man Policy on their different um artists it's all called artists. key man policy mm -hmm. it's, it's all it is is life insurance it's okay just corporate okay so basically in a nutshell all of these different artists god forbid rest in peace that's passing away and dying they don't realize it but they signed away paperwork that it goes right into whatever companies whatever record company that they have and that goes to them not their family i, I want to put you guys in a scenario real fast um i'm an african-american and I don't have life insurance. What do you say to me about acquiring my life insurance? I'm like, you know what? You like, you know, it's like, say it's $30 a month. Mm -hmm. And you like, yo, it's only $30 a month. And I'm telling you like, well, you know, I'm, I'm living. I don't need it right now. You know how it is. Because a lot, like in our culture, a lot of people don't have life insurance. They don't. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of GoFundMes. I hate seeing that. Me yeah. too. Let's just be real. I'm, I'm gonna say this on here. We, let's say we're a podcast. We got the dopest show out, <laughs> but no, for real. No, nah, yeah. It, 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 it and I don't want to like. Man, I don't care. But when people pass away, even celebrities and stuff, and people that make substantial amount of money, and then you see a GoFundMe, you'd be like, it's mind boggling. Ain't yeah. no way in the world you'd go fund me if you just did like 17 movies. Yeah. And like. How did how did this happen? I'm, it's, it's a weird question, but like, how did this happen? And what do you guys say to try to get someone to acquire life insurance? You know, it's it's not a <clears throat> it's not about what you say. Think about it like this: you like to go on vacation. Okay, cool. Everybody like to go on vacation, right? Um, so imagine this: imagine you and your whole family, you are going on vacation and you're driving across the coast. You're looking over to the out to the outside. You see the ocean, the sailboats. You see the whales jumping out. You see the dolphins. You have a conversation. Life is good. You're smiling. You just got a new promotion. And then life suddenly takes a turn. You didn't know that on the other side of the road, somebody blew a tire and they coming straight for you. You get into a car accident. Now, three months later, you wake up from a coma. You don't know where your kid's at. You're the breadwinner. Your house is in foreclosure. What do you do in that situation? I don't even know. I might call my, I might call my pops. You might call your pops. <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, I, I, I'm in that situation. I, honestly, I don't know. That's right. like a nobody knows, right? Most you don't people, know. You, 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 you it catch, that catches you off guard. Like you don't it, know what to do. It catches you off guard, right? So most people might say, "Well, I'm gonna go to my savings account and I'm gonna go to my retirement." Well, how long is that going to last before you run out? Remember, your breadwinner is still in, in the hospital in a coma. 
Now, wouldn't you want to have something in place in case that happens, that if you get into a bad car accident, you get severely sick, you get chronic illness or cancer, a life insurance policy will pay you out, the death benefit, even though you're still alive, to able to take care of your necessities? Everybody think, right? So now I say that's why you should have life insurance, and the best time to get life insurance is now, right? Especially when you're young because life insurance is cheap. Most people don't know by the time you yeah, need you life a, insurance, yeah. it gets expensive. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I I heard the older you get, the more expensive it is. Cause um, obviously you getting older, so you're closer to the at the can. And I don't want to say it like that. <laughs> uh, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's the, it's the truth though. Yeah. You know, and and that's why we pushed the needle because it was a time where a client came to us, um, actually asking for life insurance. True story too. Um, it was her friend's um, mom's husband. Mm-hmm. Healthy dude looks so healthy. He got married. He was so joyful. And um, we are trying to give him a policy, but he said he had a policy. He had one. Okay. Um, what we like to do when we say, when people have policy, we like to look at it and make sure, you, one, what we find out, you don't have enough coverage. Two, you got the wrong policy. So we like to see your policy to make sure you got the right co- uh, policy and the right coverage. But, um, you know, fortunately, a week later at, after his wedding, he passed away. Wow. Although he had life insurance, he had the wrong policy. So his did his wife? I'm just kidding. Did his wife get anything? Nothing. <sighs> Nothing, because it was accidental insurance. That's tough, man. It's tough. It's tough. As I was I was telling y'all, yeah, like my dad's a bishop, right? So like a lot of times, um, we talk about death all the time in my family because my dad being a, every day he called me like, yes, I just I just died, and um, him 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 having a church. It's a it's a big church. We we host a lot of funerals there. So I I'd be like, man, they ain't have no insurance. And and I'd be asking my pops. That's the first thing I ask them. Cause we 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 host about four funerals a week at my dad's church. Easily. Mm-hmm. Easily four funerals a week. So I'd be knowing about people having life insurance. And my father's be like, I don't understand why people don't be having insurance. But he sees it so much. He sees it so much. And that's why people get cremated. That's why. That's why, like a lot of people get cremated, and and I, I like what you guys were saying. You guys are, are getting people to get life insurance, and you're not trying to get them to think about the death part. You you trying to get them to think about the part that stuff that could happen right now, and I want to stay here for a minute because so many questions. There's so many. It's so much mis like guided information. If I get a policy, right? <clears throat> say it's like say I get a policy today, mm-hmm. and and because I'm I'm hearing. In two years, I could go take 200K out, go buy me a Maybach, <laughs> take take my girl out, take my side chick out, take my oh, other girl out. Stop it. Listen, <laughs> listen, yeah. this is what I'm hearing. Right. How does this work when it comes down to pulling money out of your policy? Like, in a sense of just, just give us a little, like, a little information on that because there's so many misconceptions of that and people are really giving false information. Yeah. You want to go? Or, or yeah, go? so... Okay. You know, um, most cases, you can't pull out money. I mean, in most cases, you do have to wait in period. Because why? Because people don't fund the policy properly. When we say fund it properly, it's a certain amount of money you're supposed to put in the policy to make the policy grow. Now, they, people set it up as a target premium. That means the bank is going to charge you $100. Okay, that's what the bank is going to That's the minimum payment you can pay to keep your policy alive but you want to overfund it because everything after that goes towards the cash value and that's where you gain the interest. But most people just barely fund the thing and so they have to wait for that period. But if they overfund the policy, that money will be available faster where you can able to borrow it less than two years. Okay. So what we normally do is we, some people could only afford 30 or 100 bucks or whatever the case may be, right? And then what's your goal? What's your three-year goal, your five-year goal? We check back in with them every year or every mm-hmm. six months. Hey, such and such, remember that plan we had and we showed you how that money is going to look and pop in two years? Have you done the six-month plan that we told you to do? Did you put in that extra money? No. Okay, well, I'm here holding you accountable, holding your hand. Let's let's do that sometime this week so that we can keep up with your goal. Okay. Pulling that money out. So let me ask you this. Um, Number-wise... Cause I, I want the world to see. I want I want the culture to kind of see what's going on with this episode. 
What's a um what's a good amount? What's a what's a give me a policy that's like a, a, a an affordable policy, um, probably like a popular policy that you could like present to the world monthly wise. Affordable would be more so like of a term. A term? Yeah. Okay. So maybe about twenty six dollars, thirty dollars. And I, the way I look at it, that's like literally five to ten dollars a week. That's so, coffee. so that's th so that's thirty dollars a week. I mean, yeah. that's thirty dollars a month. Yeah, that's coffee. So, with that third, with that thirty dollar month, because I and I want, because just the thing though, I want the culture to see this. The culture, they, they don't really get it. Mm -hmm. People dying every single day. They they putting them. They putting their faces on the t-shirts. They're writing like, let's just mm -hmm. let's just be clear. Let's like we hear, and I, I, like like we hear, and we gotta. I always feel like I got a job to do to give the information out, and you guys are here, and you guys are knowledgeable. You guys are dope. I'm digging it. Y'all like Jordan and Pippen. <laughs> we gonna keep going. So, with that, with that, with that term, what comes with that? So, with the term, it's either last 10, 20, 30, 40 years, whatever. So it means it lasts for that term, whatever that period is. And then with that, not all term, but all of our terms, we make sure that our clients have living benefits. So that's the critical chronic illness, terminal illness, and critical injury. That's like if you get into a bad car accident. Okay. So that comes with that. Go ahead. Who, me? Okay. I you no, no. I'm, <laughs> yo, okay. I'm, I'm really, really listening. I, oh, like, okay. I'm really, really listening because, like, oh. people, I want people to hear this because, like, we're going to bring some people on to this. Like, yeah. I, I want them to hear this. And I want them to also hear how inexpensive it is. Yes. So that comes with the <clears> term. All of the terms, you have to look at your premiums. Premium is your monthly payment or your yearly payment. And you want to ask your broker like, hey, does this change or does it stay the same? All of the policies that we do with for people, they stay the same. That means if you got a 30-year policy for $30 a month, that's what it's going to be. We ain't going to change up on you. That's it. But there are some companies that your premiums are increasing premiums. So you have to look. If they, you see all these little numbers, well, what's this? What's this extra $3? I'm telling you. Dollars, cents, adds it up. Adds up. Yeah, I know. I got a daughter. <laughs> well, let me flip me Man, let's see. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. yeah. We <laughs> I look at the cash app all the time. That The cash app, not the cut you, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, you good. Stay right there. When you send cash app now, you know you can send it. It shows the total of how really? much you send. Yeah. Oh, okay. It can show you how much you send your daughter. Oh, okay. I'll be showing her, like, you see this? This is how much I sent you this week. Don't ask for nothing else for the rest of the year, yo. But I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you good, you good. No, we on the way driving up here, um, my uncle called me and he was mm -hmm. just like, Hey, uh, niece, I said, What's up? And he was just like, I need to get another policy. I got this, you know, he cussing, this crazy policy and it's going up. I, and I was like, I thought we talked about that, uh, and it's so sad because it's even our own family members, right? And he was just like, Well, it's going up every year. And right now, me and auntie's policy is X amount of dollars. That's not where we started. So I'm like, okay, cool, bet. We want to make sure that we put you in, you know, in the right thing. But people don't realize that different companies, they do have those increasing policies. Is, 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 but that, that's okay for the company to do that, though, am I correct? Is that okay for, oh, yeah, I mean, okay. that's, that's what they're doing. They're paying for, there's different fees in there. Okay. I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, let's, let's. You made a you you was talking about a term off off the record, um, saying that you are the bank. What yeah, is it? Become your own bank. Yeah, become your own bank. Yeah. Let me let me get my terminology right. Yeah. Let, me, <laughs> let me let me act a little smart. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what does that term exactly mean? Um, it means instead of going to the bank, you become your own bank through a life insurance policy. Um, you familiar with the Rockefellers, right? Yes. So uh, we all know Rockefellers built a uh, empire of oil, but they was able to strategically use life insurance to make sure their family would never have to worry about money ever again. What? As a terminology, I didn't know that. Becoming your own bank. That's why the Rockefellers are still here. Now, becoming your own bank means is you want to have the minimum death benefit because you're paying for the insurance and you want to overfund the policy. So we say, for instance, if if you're putting in five hundred bucks inside a policy. We say 100 bucks is going towards insurance. That other four is going towards your bank. So every time you're overfunding that policy, it's getting compound interest. You know, the average of compound interest is 8 to 10% on that money. Now, the good thing about becoming your own bank, you don't know the life insurance policy will actually allow you to borrow the money 
and still pay you interest on the borrowed money. So this is how this is how I teach people how to do real estate deals through life insurance. I say, okay, if you got sixty thousand dollars just sitting in the bank, not growing no interest, right? Let's put that sixty thousand dollars inside this life insurance policy, and whenever you decide to flip the house, you can able to take this money out the life insurance policy while still gaining compound interest, while still getting the cash producing assets. So now you're growing money here, and, they, and your money's still growing in your life insurance policy. See, this is how we become our own bank. See, this is what the rich folks do all the time. You know, um, this is the things that we don't know about because mm-hmm. it's, it's not in our culture. That's a fact. And we don't believe it. It's a fact. I'm here to tell you these things actually exist. We just don't know. And this is how you become your own bank. That's what it is. And a key factor they did, too, in that towards the end, you take the oldest person that, you know, is sad, that's going to be passing away pretty soon. Sorry. Sorry about that. (laughs) Sorry, (laughs) Grady. But you take that person and you get them a large policy or a decent policy. Once they pass away, you have your trust. And then all of that money goes into the trust. And it's like the family trust. So the money just keeps recycling. The next oldest person, you take some of that money from that policy, you buy them a good policy, and then they have now, like what they already had a policy, plus they have this really good one that you've already funded. And then when they pass away, so then when events come up, you want to get a compound, buy a compound house for the whole family. It's literally, hey, can we borrow money from the trust or whatever the case may be, which is your policy. Okay. And then you're able to create generational wealth like that and keep that going. Man, I love this. Um, this this information is very, very much needed in the culture. I want I was looking forward to this to this episode because I love information and a lot of times the culture doesn't really get the information that they need. Um, I wanna appreciate you guys, the boys, Brooklyn and Kevin. Before we get you up no no. I want you guys to let everybody know where they can follow your Instagram, um, websites and all that. Oh, yeah. So you can follow me at I am Kevin underscore Moore on Instagram. You also can follow me on Facebook. Kevin Moore, my name. Oh, also, before I go, um, we're doing a special. We starting Black Friday early. Now, we want to make sure all the entrepreneurs with bad credit being positioned next year to be able to afford these crashes that's fit to happen. So you can go to my my Instagram. I am Kevin underscore Moore and click the link. I'm teaching everybody how to repair their credit for free. Ooh. Yeah. And my name is Brooklyn Moore. So uh, Instagram, I am Brooklyn Moore. And then Facebook is Brooke Moore. Um, and that is pretty much it. But yeah, click on the link. And if you want to schedule an appointment, go ahead and schedule an appointment. We'll talk to you in chat. I'm going to put you guys on the spot before we get your bad. I'm actually have three questions. You can't give me your honest answer. First question is Prince or Michael Jackson? Michael. Mike. I'm going with Mike. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next question is LeBron or Magic Johnson? Ooh. <laughs> I got to go with Bron. Yeah, LeBron. And the last one is Too Short or E-40? Ooh, I got to go with Show. Too Short. Yo, y'all like really married. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we up out here. It's Say World Podcast. Y'all know what it is. The fastest growing podcast up in the world right now. You know. Say Word. Only fans, real estate, talking in fashion. Let them know what's happening. Say